it's because right. I've been having a lot of fun. Mm. Um, besides learning and having um, educational conversations and attending talks, which were um, super informative, um, I'm, I am pretty sad that it's the last day of the conference. Yeah, so can you quickly do the, the mood check thing so that we make sure that we're all okay? you like, mood check thing? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Um, so from a scale of 1 to 10... I would rate myself a young 7.5 um, because I'm oh. excited of our lineup today. Um, um, our breakfast show is quite interesting. Um, we are interviewing a few guests. Um, some of them are from the um, Youth Advisory Committee. Um, I'm sure you guys have been seeing their faces around. Um, we've got Thibault, we've mm -hmm. got um, Gerald, we've got Beatrice, we've got Mary Ann, and we've got and Angela we've got, as well. Yeah, the Chief Executive Officer of Peer Health Exchange. So. Yeah. So uh, many interesting personalities today. You haven't mm -hmm. told us how you're feeling, though. I am feeling a solid 9 out of 10. I'm very what? excited. Yeah. I slept well yesterday, so this is why Good I'm for you. ready. <laughs> Good for you. I had, Thank like, an hour power nap, and that was it. I grew up. Like, yeah, it's a breakfast show. Let's do this. <laughs> Tato, how are you feeling? How am I feeling? How am I feeling? I feel like, um, let me just say 7 out of 10. Because, like, I'm still feeling nervous a little bit, yeah. but happy and also sad for the fact that it is the last day of learning. Like, I uh, just wanted to extend the days a little bit further, a little bit more, you know. But, yeah, 7 out of 10. It's good. It's going to become a 10 by the end of the <laughs> session. <laughs> I'd like it to be like that. Yeah, um, so we've been attending talks um, and concerts and getting to meet and know new people. You know, like from all around the world. Mm. See, that was insightful. Um, so what, what I want to know is what are you guys' highlights for like the entire conference? My highlights got to be yesterday um, session with Naya Kid and everyone. And I also it's actually love... pronounced Kete. Kete. Oh, we're learning every day, yeah. everybody. So it's Naya Kete. I, I love uh, the fact that uh, she said God didn't exist in that space um, organization that helped the artist. So she apparently uses art to express or, you know. She does. And mm. we're interviewing her later on today. I'm looking forward to that. Like, I'm super excited about that. Um, so, yeah. Is that all from you? Yeah, that's all from me. Oh, oh. And by the way, um, from the president, uh, I also... Um, taking out the fact that uh, he said we have to listen to each other and he spoke about the freedom of speech, religion, redefining our freedom, if you remember very well, and also the use of social media related to artificial intelligence. That was a very interesting topic. Yeah, yeah. This, uh, this conversation was very interesting and he made a lot of amazing points. Mm -hmm. It was amazing seeing uh, Mr. Obama live on stage. Yeah. I don't know so if it's the South African in me, but he low-key gave Mandela vibes. Like, even the way he waved, I was like, what? Yeah. Um, so, true. Helena, uh, what was your highlight for, like, the entire conference? My highlight definitely had to be the release festival. Rosalia, she was phenomenal. I know. She was insane. Uh, like, uh, the way she, her energy was on top with every single song she performed. And she wasn't just like sitting and performing at a corner. She was Ooh. dancing. She was dancing all around. She was insane. She was wonderful. Like she was born to do this. Yeah. Um, um, but like my highlight um, would be obviously the release. Um, but then attending the talk yesterday um, made me realize that you cannot say you know enough about mental health. And there's quite a lot of ways to, to deal with um, everything that you're going through. Um, for instance, we're interviewing Naya later on. Um, she was speaking about um, using art to, 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 to heal. Mm -hmm. she's, a, she's a song healer. I never knew that things like that existed until I looked her up. Yeah. She's a song healer and, and she uses songwriting to, to, to heal trauma, like traumatic experience. She spoke about um, this young man yesterday, which she shared her story um, with permission, obviously. She shared the story of this young man who got molested by his father at, from yeah. a very young age to his like late teens. And she wrote a song about it, like a very beautiful song. And, and, and the young man's therapist like, didn't advise um, 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 Naya sharing the song, but then when she sang it and when she did, he, he felt healing. He, 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 
he felt like there's someone who understands what he's going through and then he could finally start his healing journey. I didn't know that something like that could happen through a song. Like, it's, it's mm -hmm. a song. But, um, so, yeah, just a quick line-up for today and what, we're gonna, what, what we have in store for you guys. Um, so, um, right now, well, not right now, but then, yeah. In, like, a few, we're going to have Gerald and Thibault from the Youth Advisory Committee. And straight after that, we have Miss Beatrice. Yeah. We're going to have her, and then we're going to have um, Angela from the um, Digital Storytelling Group. Yeah, and then straight after that, we have... Mary Ann, to close off our show. Yeah, it was super fun, guys. So, yeah, see you in a few. Yep. Your workshop and Radio Pantheon. Just like that, we're back, and as I promised, um, we have Gerald and Thibault from the Youth Advisory Committee who are going to be sharing us with their, per their personal experiences and their mental health journeys. Um, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. It's nice to be here. Good morning. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Would you guys like to introduce yourselves? You want to start us off? You want to Go ahead. You start it first. I'm, I'm Thibault Hirsch. I'm from Los Angeles, and... Um, yeah, it's been it's been a very special experience for me to be here with with such a diverse and interesting group of people. I, I think the conversations and like the image is is a lot of what people see, but what they don't see sometimes is me and Gerald like getting coffee, and I'm like, how is this different? Like yeah. in your experience, where you're like Italy, Cameroon, like talking about that in the in the wider group as well. Mm -hmm. So grateful to be a part of that. Yeah, like, uh, indeed, and uh, I don't have so much to add on what he said. Like, it's, it's like, really incredible, like, knowing from where I come from. I'm mm -hmm. originally from Cameroon, and I go by the name Jaron Bale, based in Italy. Yeah. And, uh, like, people just see what we are here, like a group, mm -hmm. but they don't know about our individual journey. I mean, like, each of us have his own past and have his own challenges and deal with them every day. But the, like, most tremendous thing about it is, like, when we come together, mm -hmm. we don't see that. Like, we live, uh, we live, like, in real time. Like, we share ideas, we discuss, we, we try to implement things. But we still carry our bondages, like, inside of us. Like, and that's what we take. And we, when we communicate, we see that we are similar, even though we have a very different past. Yeah, I totally relate to that. Like, I totally do. So, Gerald, you shook Obama's hand yesterday. Oh. Yeah. You, you literally shook his hand. Like, 
what did he say to you? How was that like? How did you feel? Like, I mean, you take like, us through the experience. <laughs> it's, it's crazy, but it's like, it's really insane. It's like when you, you live a moment where you have never thought of like being there at that moment. Right. And when you have a man right in front of you, you become speechless. <laughs> like you just like, you shake the hand, like you lack words. But it was very, very quick conversation. Like he was really thrilled about what we are doing. And uh, I mean, like leaders of his caliber believe that future, the future of tomorrow is just like it start from the youth. Yeah. So uh, seeing us engage and uh, working together with uh, uh, the, 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 the entire group to shape things and like to amplify our voice is for him the best way to start to have a better future. That's what he said, that he was really yeah. thrilled of the work we are doing. It was wonderful. I mean, like. Obama, man. <laughs> I know, right? And we're super proud of you. We're all so super proud of you. Um, so you literally just mentioned um, when you were introducing yourself that you're from Cameroon and you live in Italy, in Italy right now. So can you tell us the story of how you ended up in all of these places and how you literally ended up in Athens as well? Yeah, I'm going to make it very short because it's something that can take about like 48 hours if I want to talk about it. Right. I mean like... Uh, Let's take your time. Yeah. I, I kind of feel like we have the whole day. Okay. But we kind of don't. Okay. But we do, but we don't. Yeah, <laughs> I, will, I will try to give it to the audience in a very specific way. Yeah. I mean like at a very young age, I was obliged to flee out of my country. My original country is Cameroon. Mm -hmm. And in Cameroon, I live from... Uh, I live a very unstable life as a child. And I was from like the North region, uh, a very every challenge area where uh, there is an ongoing disaster, climate change disaster going on. Yeah. And uh, uh, there is also uh, some types of uh, attacks from a group of armed men, like uh, terrorizing the entire region. And uh, I found myself in that situation when I was very young. And I was like guided to go out of the country to unknown people, accompanied by unknown people. So I have the journey of of a young African male traveling through the Sahara Desert in some of the most dangerous conditions you could ever imagine, with some of the most dangerous men that humanity can imagine, then spending long hours in a, on a dinghy in the middle of the Mediterranean before being rescued and transferred into a refugee camp. So when we focus on mental health mm -hmm. here at SNF Nostos Conference, like I really embody what it means to like leave separation detention yeah. I mean like the lack of attention from family and uh, those are things that we carry with us for a very long time uh, and if we don't get help we stay in that bondage so like today I'm here with the Stavros Nyarkos Foundation Youth Advisory Committee uh, we see Gerard yeah. but we don't see that I mean like we don't see Gerard in this moment of anxiety yeah. always in his bed in the refugee camp, like uh, uh, in his nightmares, like, like really, really afraid to go out because like he has like this huge language barrier in a country where he doesn't know anything about the culture or anything, and he's still an underage guy. And, uh, but it was incredible, the, the transformation I had because I had the opportunity to like meet a very special body. Like this is, very, this is gonna be very, uh, beautiful for, for you and for the audience. Yeah. Like just imagine that I was in that stage and uh, I had the opportunity to get included by another marginalized demographic of our community people with uh, intellectual challenges. Mm -hmm. Like that is the only moment where I felt part of a group. Like what? it was just like a simple invitation. Hey man, come on, play with us. Like come on, play soccer with us but with a very profound and tremendous transformation of impact. Like, a very huge transformative impact because, like, you be in the middle of people with intellectual challenges, like a unified partner, going with the intention of being a partner, like, like helping them to play. But at the same time, you receive, like, a very mutual transformation while trying to help them. Like, you see your difficulties in another language in those guys. And I said, man, I must be an advocate for these guys. Like I must yeah. raise my voice to amplify these differences, but that are really challenging. And that's how I regained my self-esteem. That's how I started dreaming again. That's why I went back to school, I went back to the university. I got job opportunity. And like, where am I? I'm here today, like with a very 
vibrant team of very vibrant youths. And I had the <laughs> opportunity to meet my, my friend here, Tivo. Hey. Like, you know, that's how people connect, you know. Yeah. Like, uh, somebody like him that was very curious about uh, knowing how I undergo what I have, what I, what I pass through, and how I deal with them every day. But while communicating, like, we realize that though I've undergo, though I like had to enjoy all these challenges, and uh, our daily life is the same. Yeah. Like the same mental challenges that he had during lockdown, and like maybe uh, the same one he lives with every day are the same thing I, I face every day. So uh, we are similar in our differences and somehow, and he's a very, uh, 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 a very interesting gentleman because like what he, what he has chosen to do in his career is very, very interesting. He's into fair making and he has already had experience of a young guy. I mean, like when you see the young American who decide to travel, go back in certain regions of Africa, definitely that is an opportunity to like grow your mindset mm -hmm. and like to explore to become somebody who's very open. And uh, I think I will leave Thibaut to talk as well. Okay. Um, what I want to say is that um, I do acknowledge that um, um, your experiences have been very traumatic and I can only imagine how much it took for you to, to, to try and overcome all of that. But I find it very empowering that um, you found your self-esteem into advocacy. Like, that is just powerful. That is just... Tiba, we haven't forgotten about you, Chomi. No, no, no. We'll this never is, forget you. Important things to um, say. So you literally mentioned to me, I think it was at breakfast, that um, you flew in from Jamaica. What were you doing in Jamaica? Please, I beg. I this this past summer, I guess this summer, I've I've had the opportunity to work at a for a cancer research institute in Jamaica. Yeah. They're doing very important work on genomic sequencing and understanding how a group Essentially, in the, in the Caribbean, there's an utter lack of, of data about cancer. And as a result, people don't know how to treat it as well. Yeah. And as a result of that and the lacking infrastructure, there, people only realize they have cancer when it's too late. So there's also um, a need for, for palliative care, which is, mm -hmm. a, you know, when you know you're going to pass, trying to figure out a way to deal with the pain. Mm -hmm. um, I, was, I was connected to one of the founders of a program or an organization called Jackery. It's Jamaican Cancer and Care Research Institute. Mm -hmm. And so I've gotten to know some of their staff and um, hopefully, I'm, I'm going right back on, I guess, tomorrow. Um, so I'll be That's continuing hectic. to work. It is hectic. But so, so yeah, I'll be, I'll be continuing work on that. Try mm -hmm. to create a, a good a video that shows why there is such a need for for cancer care in, in the Caribbean and in um, Jamaica specifically. Yeah, um, um, you did mention it, and even Gerald mentioned that um, you're into um, videography. So can you tell us a story or just walk us through um, the moment when you realize that like, this is actually what I love doing, like this is it, like this is my passion. Totally, I, I think that I've, I've accidentally, I wouldn't, I would say that I'm not so, so sure that that's exactly what I want to do. I would say that okay. the, it's been a tool for me thus far to connect with people from all over the world mm -hmm. and connect with people in a way that, that, that goes beyond what otherwise I might be able to do. For, I mean, last year I went to, to Sierra Leone and instead of being there for, instead of being in Freetown for like a week and looking at a pretty beach or two and then running away, <laughs> I, I got to... Uh, I got to work there for like two months and meet people, connect with people, and entertain relationships that through through film that otherwise I wouldn't have been able to to have. So thus far, that's been my guiding star in uh, in making videos and making film. So maybe that will lead to something else. I mean, after hearing um, the President Barack Obama speak yesterday, I was like, maybe there are other ways to connect with people and. You know, there are. Meeting. Yeah. So. There are. We're literally going to interview Naya later on, um, and she's a song healer, and that's a discovery. I was like, I didn't know that um, st st things like this like do exist. Like literally healing someone through a song, that is just so powerful. Like, um, so um, what I want you guys um to to to, to walk me through. Um, is a story of how you guys got to join the Youth Advisory Committee. 
Like, I think, I think we really want to hear that. Yeah, I, I also believe is it is uh, a very curious uh, aspect of this conference since last year. A lot of people are wondering on how we joined the SNF Nostos Committee. Mm. But uh, there is nothing specific about that. Like, we ourselves are wondering how we are in. Are you uh, being serious? Yeah, but at the end of the day, we realize that it is, uh, it is a very dynamic organization with a lot of work and trying to amplify the voice of youth, of young people. And uh, it is a, a, a tremendous organization that believes in youth, that believes that youth is the future. Uh, I mean, like, uh, I have a, a different background. I mean, like, I, as I earlier said, I, I earlier start, I started advocating for uh, uh, advocacy for uh, uh, people with intellectual challenges uh, some years ago. But I, I have a big, I have a role in a very big organization. What is an organization? What is the largest and the biggest in the world organization for people with intellectual challenges? Using sports for, for, for social change, uh, and I am uh, like a consultant in that organization, yeah. working on a project called Unify with Refugee, which is like a, a weakness in the athlete of Special Olympics, extending a hand of friendship to another marginalized group of of the community to come and uh, raise their voice in changing uh, the narrative of people of the most uh, 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 unsafe of our community. So like I have a special role where I'm coordinating events, implementing events, I'm doing some uh, uh, in-person presentation. Mm -hmm. I am a special employee for, for the partnership we have with a lot of uh, ONG and private foundations. And uh, I mean like, uh, uh, I mean like I'm already doing something into the community before uh, being here. And I think uh, what I'm doing, the role I'm playing in the community as a whole is something that uh, needs to be amplified. And the re-canals to get that really head has been part of a group of this nature. And uh, we have been very lucky, and we are lucky, to have uh, uh, the people with whom we work that uh, has demonstrated, like they are demonstrating us every day what does leadership mean, what does uh, taking young people through mean, like teaching us every day what to do, caring, asking, and like, taking us through on what they believe we, we have potential on and we have what we can do best. I mean, like, uh, we are not like uh, expert, that's yeah. total different thing, but we are aspiring experts and we are learning every day on how to serve uh, a community as a whole. So, I might, let me, I, 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 what I have to say in regards to this question is like, each of us, we are 11 of us and any of us have his story. Yeah. Any of us have his way and, uh, and uh, uh, he, or, or, or the way he, in which he approached uh, the, the, the foundation. And definitely the foundation has uh, a specific requirement in terms of profile and, and other things that they look into consideration. That's the only way I think I can answer this question. I mean, I don't have a really specific answer in that. Uh, the only thing I know is that we are blessed and we are lucky. Thank you. Thank you so much. Tibo, do you have anything to say? The, how we got here, I, I don't think is been as interesting as like what we've been able to do since we've been a part of it. I, I yeah. was essentially, from my understanding, SNF's um, affiliated with many very important and um, with with many very many important um, organizations, and within those, there there are youth that are coming up, and they were looking for a group, and so they reached out to the people they knew, and so. You end yeah. up with, with awesome people like Gerald, like Joy, like Russia, like yeah. the team. So, gentlemen, it saddens me that we have to wrap up. I could literally talk to you guys the whole day if I could, um, but then unfortunately we wrap up. I just wanted to say, like, thank you for the work that we do. We see you, we acknowledge you, and we appreciate you. Um, it's, it's, it's really rare to find young people who, who know what they're doing and who are very passionate about... Um, um, doing the work that you do. Um, but then um, the last question would be, um, well, it's not a question, rather, but then um, you guys have a really strong bond. We've been seeing that um, even last year. You guys have a, a really, really strong bond. So can you tell us a bit about what this means to you? All right, let, let me start this one off. After, okay, so I heard Look the very... Look at you being sentimental. The, the very beginning of... <laughs> 
So what, what, what Gerald told you guys, I heard at the very beginning of, of last year's conference, and I was like, there's no shot. I'm not going to ask this guy like a million questions over a pint of beer. <laughs> so I did, and I think that that made a pretty good impression on Gerald. And he was like, this is a relatively considerate human being who actually cares about what I've been through. Um, and since then, it's been a mess. <laughs> I mean, yeah, absolutely. I agree. And I'd like, like, um, I would say, yeah, I mean, like, I was also interested on, uh, on his approach, on his questions. He was really, really curious. And uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, I have traveled a lot of countries. I mean, like, traveled the whole of Africa through Libya in very challenging settings. So I've been able uh, to meet a lot of people. I mean, like, pe good and bad people at the same time. Yeah. And uh, I have been able to acquire a certain type of empathy and go uh, into empathy with people. And I feel some people definitely like skin to skin because uh, my brain uh, in a certain period of my life developed a, a, mecha a surviving mechanism that like was like and enabled me to affiliate just with the good people because I was like in a type of trauma shock period where everything around me was like so like so bad I was like really careful on how I do things so when I and I and I have this very human approach that when I see people that are very human like people that I have uh, while talking to them I realize that they have the same vision as me I mean like uh, the vision of looking into a world where uh, we will take the challenge to redefine and to uncover the world in which we live in like try to to, to change the normality of what people see a world in where we look everybody as equal yeah. I think if we grow with that type of mindset uh, at a very young age or uh, maybe in this stage of our life uh, we can definitely think of doing things together because I've seen things he has seen things He's, he comes from a different uh, community I come from a different community I am now integrated into a different community so I just like have a point of view of uh, I just like have many perspectives of things and uh, our adventure is not all, it's not only going to be here at the Stavros Narcos Foundation as Youth uh, Advisory Committee member. I mean, this is the purpose, bring youths together for them to do things in the future. And like, uh, we see things in a different way. I mean, like, I am into things. I see uh, organizations that give funds. I see uh, organizations that implement things like from grassroots sports to uh, advocacy for people. Uh, uh, LGBT crew for uh, the less marginalized one for people that leave stigmatization of type of illness I mean like uh, my friends are asylum seekers my friends are refugee my friends are migrant my friends are also non migrant so I mean I live with people that complain because of the way the society treat them I live with people that are privileged mm -hmm. because of the way society treat them so like the vision is like to try to do something in order to make things to come together in order to use the voice and the expertise that we are going to gain this year. And he has a very great expertise in a different camp. I mean, like, I think if I bring all what I've seen, I say, okay, bro, put this in the documentary. Pam, pam, pam. And two things, like, he's going to set that up. Oh. I mean, like, and the, the friendship is just, that's what we think about, like, connection and yeah. thinking towards the future and see how we can make the, play, the world a place to live in. All right, thank you so much, Gerald, and thank you, Tivo. And it's so nice to see the bond that you guys share. It's just so, even the way he calms you down when you're nervous, you're about to go on stage, so when he's acting up and his cheeks go pink, and then he's yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> romance. That's <laughs> Look at you. It's, it's something so, so yeah. nice to see. The fact that you guys are so different yet so relatable is just good to watch. And thank you so much for making the time to come by. It has been an honor so yeah thank you thank, thank you so next time yeah, see you. appreciate it appreciate it hi i go by the name gat Olwetu. i am from ucrfm radio station where your voice is our joy mental health refers to the emotional well-being of a person i just want to let you know that you are worth it even if you are not okay it's okay not to be okay take care of your health surround yourself with positive things and positive people welcome to snf masters you're listening to snf pop-up radio by radio workshop and radio pattern where we tell stories that hashtag refocus on mental health
hello, hi. We back again. Uh, right now, we are sitting with uh, Pre Patricia, the director of Pierre Health Exchange. Uh, she's going to be talking with us some of the things. So, yeah. It is lovely having you here. Good morning, first and foremost. Good morning. And uh, we have a lot of interesting questions to ask you because you're a very interesting person. <laughs> and uh, the digital storytelling workshop was amazing and we really want to let people know what that was like. So, first and foremost, can you explain what you do? Yes, number one, thank you all so much for being a part of our digital storytelling workshop. It was amazing to have you all and hearing you do this on the radio has been so amazing, like a great part of my thank experience you. here. Thank you. Um, but a little bit of what I do, I'm the director of digital well-being at Peer Health Exchange and so I oversee our self -see content, so the content that will be going on our website, self .org. I also uh, co-lead a youth group called Youth Design Group of young people ages 13 to 19 and everything that we have on our website is completely vetted by them so they review all of our resources they tell us yes or no if they want it to live on the platform and they co-design what the platform should be so what features we have what topics we mention on there um, and everything like that so it's all about elevating their voice and making sure that the product meets their needs that's so interesting i'm sure that must be a lot of hard work but it definitely pays off. It pays off, and it's never hard working with young people. Like Y'all are an amazing group of folks, so I love it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Look at you making us blush. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, can you remember exactly what was happening in your life when you decided to join Peer Health Exchange? Yeah, I was just, um, I was working at another job. And I started to feel like our values weren't aligning. And so when I started looking for work, I was approached by Peer Health Exchange. And I was scared. I had imposter syndrome. I did not apply to the job for a month. And then finally I decided to go ahead and take that chance and it was the best thing that could have happened to me But that's something that impacts me a lot. I get a lot of anxiety I get in my head and I just don't think that I'm ready to be at that next step So it took a lot of conversations with a, bit, a lot of people in my corner to get me to um, Apply for the role. So they approached you. Yeah, is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's mm -hmm. so interesting mm -hmm. um, So can I ask six since you became the director of PA health exchange like, how did your mentality now change? Like, what is that one thing that you now see differently? Oh, I mean, I've always loved working with young people. That's always been the focus of, well, like, even when I went to school, I have my master's in social work. Mm -hmm. Everything that I did was centered around creating a better future for y'all, making sure that you had the resources that you need. But I was missing that, and a lot of the things that I do was actually working with young people. And... When I think about your question, it actually takes me back to an experience that I had a couple of weeks ago where I, we, our youth group meets at like 7 p.m. every night. Every, not every night, every Tuesday night. And I had therapy from like 6 to 6.45. And I was feeling very raw. I had a very intense session with my therapist. And then I had to immediately log back on to work with our youth group. And within 15 minutes, I was feeling so much better. Like That's they were amazing. making me laugh. They were, I walked in, I was like, y'all, I'm coming in from therapy. Like I'm going to be a little bit raw. And they were like, look at you taking care of your mental health. Like we <laughs> love a queen who's doing that. And then we were just joking and laughing and hearing them, like how dedicated they were to the work that we were doing and what they wanted to make better for young people online, like instantly lifted my spirits. It's so great that like, uh, it's not only about work. It doesn't feel like work to it's, you. It That's never the feels idea like that work. I get. Yeah, <laughs> okay, it's, so it's amazing. amazing. I could spend hours. <laughs> which I need to take a break, but yeah. Yeah, your synergy at the workshop was amazing. You guys are a wonderful team. Thank you so much. We really love what we do. We love being able to work with y'all. And this is our first time really getting to do something like this in person and to have young people in person and do the work. Because the workshops are usually virtual. Really? So being able to interact with y'all in person and see your energy and just see it come to life has been amazing for us you guys are great facilitators by the way like, oh. we couldn't tell we literally oh couldn't my gosh tell. thank yeah. you so much it was y'all really helped us y'all did y'all brought the energy really and uh, you say you really enjoy your job and i love that but i'm curious does listening to so many deep and personal stories affect you like yeah. uh, if you hear to something you resonate with if you listen to something that you relate with how do you deal with that how do you take care of your mental health like that yeah that's a really great question i mean sometimes it can be really really tough um prior to doing this work i did work on a suicide hotline so i heard oh. a lot of stories that stemmed from that as well um which kind of allowed me to be prepared for stepping into this line of work but 
What I always tell folks and what I tell my team too is you, you may think that you have processed everything, that there aren't going to be subject matters that impact you, but until you're in the moment and you're listening to something, that's when you'll notice yourself maybe start to tear up. Um, and when I find those moments happening is when I'll usually take a step back from the work. I'll be really honest with my team and my manager and say, hey, I just need to take a break. I need to walk away. Maybe I'll log off for the rest of the day. I, as I mentioned earlier, I am in therapy, so I'll reach out to my therapist to see if she she can have a session. Um, I'll journal. I watch my comfort show. Maybe listen to music. Um, or sometimes, what I like to do if I've had a really overwhelming day is I like to sit in the quiet and just cook. I like have no music on. I'm not talking to anybody. I am just sitting there with my recipe, chopping my vegetables, doing whatever I need to do to clear my head of anything. It's really nice that you guys are looking out for each other in uh, yeah. such circumstances. Our t team is amazing. They will be like, you haven't taken time off in a while. You need to take some time off or take yeah. a day, you know, or like, why don't you take a half day? You've been working all morning. So it's really, really impactful to have a team like that that generally cares about your well-being. It, it really makes going to work, like, again, like y'all said, fun, and you know that everyone is looking out for you. Yeah, and the fact that you were working at a suicide prevention hotline, that's... Uh, I can only imagine how strong-willed you have to be to do a job like that. Yeah, I'll shut them out. It was actually with the Trevor Project, who's here today. Oh. Um, they'll be speaking later this afternoon. But yes, I spent almost four years working with that organization, and I've learned so much from them. Oh, We're definitely amazing. attending. Yeah. We're definitely <laughs> attending the talk. And uh, as you know, we were both at the President Obama talk yesterday, yes. and uh, I was wondering, he mentioned in his speech that uh, we can use our story to help others, and since this is what you do at Peer Health Exchange, I would like to ask you, how do we use our story to connect to others, to help others? Yeah, well, y'all have been doing it all conference long. Mm -hmm. um, my team and I have just been hearing y'all talk about your own instances and y'all all mentioning anxiety and stress and like even nerves. And what I want to say is the fact that y'all have been so vulnerable and sharing those stories here on the radio has been helping young people as well. And not only helping young people who are listening, but it helps you too because you get to take ownership of your narrative. You get to be the one to... Um, decide how you want to tell your story, how you want to share it, and then young people will always take what they need. So they might not be going through that same experience, but the things that you have learned to implement into your life, they'll be able to be like, oh, I might have a similar situation I, when I'm stressed. I remember them hearing this on the radio. I remember hearing them say this um, another time, and they might take that into their own life. Great. It has been lovely talking to you, and I wish we could uh, talk for longer, but unfortunately, we're very short on time. Thank you so much, Patricia, for this uh, interview. Thank yeah. you so much for having me. Thank it's been great. Thank you. It's been lovely. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Amazing. SNF Pop Up Radio. Now let us imagine that you're in the middle of your disc jockey program. Hey, listen up, everybody. It's going to be so awesome. Yeah. With, With the, 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 the radio, radio workshop, workshop and Radio Pantia.
And just like that, we were back. And right now, we are with Shoni Pilendaba. Yeah. 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 <laughs> she's our field reporter, and she's been doing field reporting throughout the entire conference. So, Shoni, yeah. tell us, baby girl, how is it out there? It's so great. Like, I really enjoy talking to so many people. I've really just been enjoying talking to so many people, getting mm -hmm. so many different opinions. Like, I can ask a lot of people, like five people, one question and get so many different, different responses. responses. Yeah, like I can ask, I, I've asked, um, the most questions that I've asked is what brings you here? And it's not like everyone said, oh, the SNF conference, and then just oh. left it like that, you know? But I got a response saying, um, this lady, she said she she's here because she likes, she's interested in mental health, you know? She's very big on mental health. Mm -hmm. And being here is actually helping her learn more than what she's known, you know? It's, it's like broadening her knowledge on mental health. And she really like, really, really enjoyed. Like, I think, I think that was like five minutes long. Really? Like, I'm pretty sure it was five minutes long. Uh, just, just her asking me that, me, just me asking her that one question, literally, she just went off. I loved it. I loved it. So how have you, how have you been enjoying the conference so far? Because I know that we went to see Rosalia <laughs> and Central C, yeah, but not, not only entertainment, yeah, yeah, but yeah. like, yeah, yeah. And we literally went to um, 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 the, the, the arts talk yesterday where, where oh, yes. Naya was a speaker. Yes, yeah. Naya was and a speaker. Sandra. And also we got to see people's um, talents, like Naya yeah. sang for us, she sang, Constantina, Constantina danced, danced for us. And we were like, that was lovely. Girl. That was lovely. <laughs> People are talented out there. People are really talented out there. And what I liked about that is that um, that arts conference, yeah. that arts session, is that um, people, or oh well, yeah, people, I can say people, um, integrate art and how to heal mental yeah. health. Yeah, like, it's crazy how just one little song about you and your experience can actually help you be, feel so much better and just that, that someone singing about your experiences will like literally make you feel so much better and make you feel so much lighter and everything. It's lovely. I love it. So can I ask you, like, what are your expectation, expectations for today? For My expectations day? for today, um, I really, I really want, I really, really, really want to talk to Constantina. Mm. I, I really, yo, like, <laughs> like I understand I'm, so, the feeling. I'm so excited. Um, other expectations for today? I'm just expecting to get like, I'm expecting to obviously ask a different question today yeah. and to get um, more knowledge because yesterday was a very informative day. Right. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that today is an even bigger you know, like it's bigger and better. Like it's the last day. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Look Come at on. you getting goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> I love your energy <laughs> so Mr. much. Thank you. So I was literally yesterday years old when I learned that like you could really start your healing journey with like dancing. Like yeah. dancing exercises, a uh, uh, thingy majiggy muscle in your brain. Mm -hmm. She explained everything. Like literally was, everything. I was literally yesterday years old. But then unfortunately, sweetie pie, we have to let you go um, mm. because we can't talk all day. I really yeah. wish we could, but we can't. And I wish we could, but we can't. Like, we really can't. But then, yeah, it has been great having you. Um, you. Go there in the field and all the best. Like, oh, I know it's yeah. empty out there. So. Yeah, Good luck. Is. I even wore better shoes today. Hugs and kisses. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. <laughs> so, um, um, we'll see y'all in the jippy. So, yeah. guys, it is literally it from us. It has been a lovely breakfast show. The energy has been unmatched. And right now, coming up, we are going to have Mary Ann Nobele, our youth advisory um, committee member from Sauda. Guys, she's from Sauda. Please, I need a, a, drum, a young drum roll, please. SNF Pop Up Radio with the Radio Workshop and Radio Pantheon.
And right, of course, we began it again. Like we never left. And right here, I'm sitting with uh, uh, the member of the Youth Advisory Committee from South, uh, South Africa. Shine, girl, shine. <laughs> Mary and uh, Nobel. Can you please kindly maybe introduce yourself? Um, okay, hi. I'm Mary Ann Nobele. Like Tato said, I'm from South Africa. And I'm part of this year's Youth Advisory Committee, which has been so exciting. So much has happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know, I know story, storytelling and writing is important to you. Absolutely. Yeah, so, so is it to me. So, so do I. I love uh, storytelling. I love <laughs> Look writing. Look at you trying to relate. <laughs> I, I relate, you know, get the vibes. So, like, tell me the story of how you fell in love with writing. With writing? Mm -hmm. mm. Or maybe um, storytelling, rather. Um, I think for me, it's definitely, it has a lot to do with the community I come from. I've seen so many things happen there. Um, I've, I've experienced people's journeys with them. And it's just like, I think, especially because of where I stay in South Africa, a lot of the people I grew up around were like relatively privileged. And so it's like they were in this little bubble of not understanding that outside of like Santon, there's a completely different life and not even like too far from it. Um, and people are kind of living oppositely to, to how they're living. And so I was just like, this needs to, I, I firmly believe that firstly people relate more than they realize. And through stories, firstly, they realize that, but they also start to understand um, the importance of actually understanding what's happening around them. And that's why I, I've recently like, fallen in love with watching the news, mm -hmm. because firstly, we're always hearing stories there. But it's really important to just know what's happening around you, staying in touch, um, and understanding that as much as you might be experiencing life one way, there are tons of other people who are experiencing it completely differently. So you told us something about uh, being from the the place you live at, it's yes. inspired by where you live. Can you please maybe kindly like describe for us what's how where does I come the from? Place oh, look? Alex is like, <laughs> yeah, Alex. Okay, is like? so I come from Alexandra in Johannesburg, South Africa. Mm -hmm. Alexandra is the oldest township in the country, mm -hmm. and really? it's mad ghetto, not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> tons of shacks, a dirty river. Um, but really amazing people, great food, incredible music. Uh, and I think, I think it's just so diverse because people came to Joburg looking for jobs from like different parts of the country. And so it's incredibly diverse, probably one of the reasons I can speak so many South African languages. Um, but yeah, there's a lot going on there. Crime, mm. hey. <laughs> vibes, groove, you name it, it's happening in Alex. You know the vibes. A yeah. lot going on. So what kind of books or articles or maybe blogs... Uh, do you enjoy reading that supports your mental health? Ooh, so I don't really, um, I haven't leaned onto like the reading article side, but I have mm -hmm. been listening to podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually got the recommendations from my sister because she always be like, I just heard this podcast. And I think, you know, you should do this in your 20s. Um, I think it's called navigating your 20s or something like that. Um, but there's it's tons of episodes of just looking at life in your 20s, things you could be keeping in mind. Um, I think for me personally, it's been eye-opening as to like certain, in terms of certain fears I have, I've listened and I'm like, that is a great way to look at it, especially because I'm a bit of a pessimist. I will overthink um, everything that's happening and I'll always think of the worst case scenario um, as if it's actually going to happen. And so I've just, listening to that has definitely helped me just think less, like to be like, you know, give me a whole new lens when looking at my 20s. So you only listen to podcasts that the um, one that's contribute to your mental health? Well, I think my, my biggest safe keeper of mental health mm -hmm. is definitely being busy. Oh. I like being out and about. I like socializing with people and being social doesn't necessarily mean partying. Um, this, you know, <laughs> conversating with people, right. hearing from them, it's really, especially because like I said, people relate more than they realize. Yeah. Um, and so having conversations with people from different parts of South Africa, from different parts of the world, definitely opens your eyes and it makes you realize that you're not alone. Okay, uh, so take me through the emotion and feeling since uh, this is the last day of the conference. Like, how are you feeling? Things like that. Because I'm feeling tired. Like, really? Wow, uh, I feel so tired. I'm so <laughs> tired. Mad, exhausted. No, we've had long days. I think I'm. I'm sad. I, I don't want to be leaving. Um, and I really can't believe it's the last day already. Uh, but I'm looking forward to a lot. I know. You know. People are going to be having certain talks. I'm presenting, um, I'm hosting one of the Q&As, and I'm going to be introducing some people onto stage. So I'm excited about that. But overall, I wish this was like a three-day conference because two just doesn't feel like enough. 
<laughs> I get that. Uh, so thank you so much for having time to sit with us here. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. You've been awesome. Mm -hmm. SNF Pop Up Radio. Now let us imagine that you're in the middle of your disc jockey program. Hey, listen up, everybody. It's going to be so awesome. With the Radio Workshop and Radio Pantia. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and we are back. Um, we're just back with your announcements um, for the day. So in order to download the app, um, you need to have registered to attend the SNF Nostos conference. Check the snfnostos.org website on the conference station. Click on the SNF Nostos app icon, which is located on the right of the screen. Um, how are you feeling? Um, it's literally a rating of your emotions for the day. So use the conference app to download, to load your answer and keep an eye out for the collective mood updates on screens on the SNFCC. To be part of the survey, you need to have downloaded the app act and activated the app's push notifications. Every time the mood check survey is live, you'll get a notification to submit your answer. So please start making your way to the halls for this morning's talk, where we'll be on stage. Mm -hmm. You guys are literally mm -hmm. visiting us mm -hmm. on stage. In a so beat. how do you guys feel about that? It's not just any stage. It's the Greek National Opera stage, Ooh. which is huge. Uh, Look at you being knowledgeable. Uh -huh. <laughs> of course, of course. I'm super stoked about that because the president is literally going to introduce us. And you know what's crazy? Mm -hmm. He could fluently pr pronounce our names. I was like, what? Look at you. I like, can't wait for that. Last year, he was literally like, Siabonga Mukwena, Zanele, And I'm like, look at you, thanks, Lindokuche. Like, what? <laughs> so, um, how are you guys feeling? Um, we are feeling tired, mm -hmm. but excited at the same time. So, yeah. yeah. How are you feeling, Elena? I'm very excited. I think that all the exhaustion has just disappeared. I am ready. I am pumped. I am just <laughs> so excited you. for the rest of the day. Okay. Um, oh, it's good. It's all good. It uh, has so been. I um, guess we'll meet again like in the afternoon. We have been. But um, mm -hmm. before, before um, 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 we go like literally on the stage, I just want to reflect on the interviews that we had this morning yeah. because we had really, really empowering and inspiring guests. And um, I felt like we really need to put a lens on the amount of work that young people put in and especially into raising awareness on mental health. What I found super inspiring is the fact that Gerald literally um, found his self-esteem back by advocating for other people. So it's literally looking at people that you relate to and you're like, okay, middle finger anxiety, I'm literally going to do this for the people who deserve it. Like yeah. that is just... Exactly. Exactly. And Tibo literally going like to different locations and like and, 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 and advocating and, and trying to get resources for people who don't have them. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, that'll be hectic. Like you, you're literally doing a documentary for someone you know that that might die. Like mm -hmm. it's literally a your days are numbered situation. Ah, mad anxiety. But mad nevertheless, anxiety. they still do it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I'm happy for and I'm glad for. Like, wow. Yeah, but I'm I'm literally looking forward to the rest of the day and the rest of the conference. And we're gonna look back and with Ushoni and we're gonna check how Constantina's interview went like. So, guys, from us, it's literally deuces. We'll see you guys in a jiffy. Well, see, see you, you in a bit. Thank see ya. you. Bye. Welcome to SNF Nostos. Welcome to SNF Pop Radio from the Radio Workshop and the Radio Pantheon, where we focus on the psychic.